Before anything else, please screen capture this. At the outset of our endeavor, napag-usapan natin yung iyong desire to become a CPA, your commitment to become a CPA, from absolutely zero subscribers, yay! First subscriber! Number two subscribers! To a few several hundreds after only four videos and five days, I've been receiving so many messages dun sa aking personal Facebook account. Dumami na nga yung aking Facebook friends because of this. May mga nagpapasalamat, madami daw silang natututunan during these times na wala pa talagang formal classes. Tsaka, some of you are even taking notes as if you are inside an actual classroom. So, ang saya. It's really heartwarming for me to have those feedbacks. That is why right now, I would like us to talk about my commitment also to you. Napag-usapan natin yung desire mo, yung commitment mo, and also my desire to help you. But we have not yet talked about my commitment to you. Because of your interest to learn, and because all of those positive feedbacks, alam mo naman siguro, di ba? Hindi ako haharap sa camera at papakita ko yung mukha ko if I am not fully committed to doing this. So, in fact, hindi lang yung mukha ko pinakita ko, even the faces of my family members. So with this, I am committing to you that I will finish entire basic accounting one. And yung basic accounting to naman, it depends dun sa ating feedback with all these videos so please keep up your support and by the end of this video we'll be announcing the first batch of winners So let us start our discussion on chapter 3, Debit and Credit, Double Entry Bookkeeping Method. Nabanggit na natin ito dun sa ating previous meeting. We will now be discussing it in detail here. O sabi, Each day, many events occur that affects the operations and the financial position of business enterprises. However, not all events are considered transactions for accounting purposes. Pag sinabing event pangyayari, it does not necessarily have any journal entry. But when you say transaction, it would necessarily entail journal entry. Ibig sabihin doon, may journal entry yun. Ano ba yung journal entry na tinatawag? In our next discussion, we'll be taking that up. So pag sinabing transactions, these are those that affect assets, liabilities, and proprietorship, which we have mentioned already in our previous meeting. Transactions can then be defined as exchanges of value. Ito na naman. For every value received, there is an equal value parted with. It is obvious, therefore, that a transaction has a double effect. This nature of every transaction gave rise to double entry book keeping method. Ito yung sinasabi natin when we mentioned before single entry bookkeeping method. Ang sabi natin, single entry bookkeeping method is an incomplete method because it only relies on one side of the accounting transaction. It does not fully document the full extent of the transaction. But in double entry bookkeeping method, such is not the case. Double entry bookkeeping does not mean recording the transaction twice. Instead, it means that every time a transaction is recorded, the recording has two parts, the left side and the right side. In accountant's language, the left side is a debit and the right side is a credit. These terms are highly technical in our profession, meaning to say, sa profession, mula, profession lang natin mo ito madidinig. You do not hear doctors saying debit, credit. You do not hear engineers saying debit, credit. In the preceding chapter, the basic accounting equation was discussed, showing two sides of the accounting equation. So, this is a review of the previous chapter. Alam na natin ito, assets is equal to liabilities plus proprietorship. The accounting equation shows a direct learning on the theory of debit and credit. Assets Assets are normally on the debit side, while liabilities and proprietorship are normally on the credit side. We will expound more on that later. The account. Showing the effects of every transaction using the accounting equation, just like we, what we have done in Chapter 2, the accounting equation, is useful in the understanding of how transactions affect the business. However, 
it would become inconvenient correct to prepare as many equations as there are transactions you still remember mr robert cruz ilang transactions meron tayo doon we had 13 transactions 13 so every transaction that he had gumawa tayo ng accounting equation showing the effect of every transaction how it affected the assets the liabilities and the proprietorship but could you imagine paano na lang kung there are hundreds of transactions every day but if even thousands of transactions every day would you make an accounting equation for each transaction nakakapagod yun and hindi siya efficient an ideal accounting system should include the record for each individual asset liability and proprietorship showing the changes therein either increases or decreases that result from the numerous transactions that take place each day during an accounting period the accounting form used to record these changes is called an account an account is defined as an accounting device used in summarizing the changes in the assets liabilities and proprietorship caused by the business transaction ito yung itsura ng standard form of an account Okay, it says here you have the date of the transaction here. Any explanation of the item in the transaction, you have your explanation column. The explanation column here usually begin with the words to record. F, ano ibig sabihin ng F? It means folio or the reference column. Okay. And you have your debit and your credit columns. These are money columns. A group of accounts is called a ledger. Next, the T account. This is perhaps the simplest form of an account. It is called a T account. Why? Kasi sabi dito, it resembles the capital letter T. A T account is shown below. This is your left side or the debit side, the right side or the credit side. Here we go with our highlight for this morning, the rules of debit and credit. The rules of debit and credit are patterned after the accounting equation. Assets are on the left side or debit side, while liabilities and proprietorship are on the right or credit side. This shows the normal balance of an accounting element or account. This refers to the normal position of an account in the accounting equation or in the ledger or the T account. So these are the rules that you should remember. These rules will not leave you even up to your board exam. Siyempre, ito yung napili mong profession, debit, credit, magiging buhay mo. Sa una, baka malito ka pa kasi first time mo, but eventually, it will flow naturally. Pagka nandyan na sa sistema mo yan, kaba. Ay, madali na lang. Rule number one. To debit an asset means to increase an asset. Anong sabi natin kanina dito? The normal balance of an asset is on the debit side. Ayan, no? Assets are on the left or the debit side. While liabilities and proprietorship are on the right or credit side. Okay? So, if ang asset has a normal debit balance at nilagay mo siya sa debit, ibig sabihin doon, masaya siya doon. mag increase siya doon. Pagka naman nilagay mo siya, not on its normal balance, mag decrease siya. Hindi siya masaya doon. Yun ang isipin mo. Okay? Assets when debited increase and assets when credited decrease. Later on, may apply natin ito. Hmm? Mamaya. Rule number two. To credit a liability means to increase a liability. Why? Liabilities have normal credit balance. So, pag credit mo siya, ini-increase mo. And consequently, liabilities do not have normal debit. They have normal credit. So, ibig sabihin, pag dinebit mo, magdi-decrease. Capital. If you credit them, if you credit the capital, you're increasing the capital account. If you debit it, you're decreasing the capital account. Number four, to debit a withdrawal means to increase the withdrawal. So if you remember in our previous meeting, doon sa ating discussion sa chapter 2, withdrawal decreases the proprietorship, tama? Open close parenthesis, padidak siya. Ngayon, pagka dinebit mo siya, okay, 
at ang withdrawal has normal debit balance, ini-increase mo siya. Ibig sabihin nun, tinataasan mo yung pambawas sa proprietorship. I hope you got that. Sa tandaan mo, withdrawal sa normal debit balances, consequently, if you credit them, dinidecrease or binabawasan mo siya. Tulad ng sinasabi dito, the withdrawal or drawing account is a deduction in the proprietorship section. Alam na natin yun. Therefore, it has a contra or opposite effect. That is, whenever it increases, proprietorship decreases. And when it decreases, proprietorship increases naman. Okay, class. So, attendance muna tayo. Please let me know you're present by hitting the subscribe button and saying present in the comment section. Bilang reward naman sa'yo sa paggawa mo yan, I will be giving you a free book. So... Wala naman mawawala sa'yo, subukan mo lang. Ano? Say present in the comment section below. I will be posting my personal Facebook account and you would have to message me there. Sasabihin mo sa akin yung pangalan mo, yung address mo, and then yung name ng school mo. You just try, please. Subukan mo, wala naman mawawala sa'yo. I will be mailing the book to you via LBC at wala kang gagastusin, wala kang gagawin bukod sa siyempre, Pagdating sa bahay ninyo, tatanggapin mo lang yung libro and that would be it. That would be my gift to you for being one of the first few subscribers. I would have to choose from the first few subscribers. So that would be my thank you gift for you. Let's continue with the lesson. Rule number five. Rule number five is all about income. Normal balance ng income, remember, is credit. If you credit therefore, you are increasing income. If you debit, therefore, you are decreasing the income. Finally, number six. To debit an expense means to increase the expense because expenses have normal debit balances. If you debit them, they increase. If you credit an expense, you're decreasing the expense. Here are, therefore, the summary rules of debit and credit. If you debit an asset, you increase it. If you debit a liability, you decrease it. If you debit a capital, you decrease it. If you debit withdrawal, you increase it. If you debit an income, you decrease it. If you debit an expense, you increase the expense. If you credit an asset, therefore, you're decreasing it. You credit a liability, you're increasing it. If you credit capital, you are increasing the capital account. If you credit withdrawal, you're decreasing. If you credit income, are you following? You're increasing it. If you credit expense, you are decreasing it. We will test kung talagang naintindihan mo yung rules of debit and credit. I would like you to go over yung in-screen grab mo kanina at the beginning of our class. And let us apply it here in our discussion. Okay, this is a test kung talagang natututo ka. Ayan. Let's go to transaction number one. These transactions are very familiar to you because these were the same 13 transactions of Mr. Robert Cruz in chapter 2. Ipon-ipon yung ginagawa natin. Kaya kailangan, uh, napanood mo from the first, nag-attend ka from the first meeting hanggang ngayon. Sabi natin, the simplest account is the T account and we would be using them. So, here are the account titles that we would be using for this particular exercise and to check kung talagang may natututunan ka. So, una natin gagawin, gagawa tayo as many T accounts as there are account titles involved in the problem. Now, Huwag kang mag-alala kung saan natin nakuha itong mga account titles na to. Alright? Don't worry yet kung saan natin nakuha yung mga account titles na yan. In the succeeding chapters, we will be introducing you to the so-called chart of accounts. Yun ay kumpletong listahan ng mga account titles na ginagamit ng bawat company. So, for every problem, dapat may ibibigay na chart of accounts. Here, hindi lang tayo nagbigay kasi Una pa lang natin at ini-illustrate pa lang natin. So, we'll be introducing you to the chart of accounts soon. So, you must make your T-accounts first. I'd like you to do that in a separate sheet of paper. Okay. Okay na. Kagawa ka na. 
what we would be doing here is just an implementation of the rules of debit and credit. So let us read transaction number one, okay? On March 1, 2020, Robert Cruz decided to start a computer rental business with an initial cash investment of 300,000. So if you notice, the account titles here, dito sa ating column of the accounts dito, are all asset accounts. These are your assets. Okay. And all of these, these two, are your liability accounts. And this column are your proprietorship items. Okay? What is the effect on assets? What account title is particularly affected by number one? It is the account title cash. What is the effect on liabilities? There is no effect. What is the effect on the proprietorship? The capital account is affected. Now, how do we increase your cash? Diba sabi natin, assets have normal debit balances. And cash is an asset. So, how do you increase your cash? You debit, correct? So, ibig sabihin, the first item would be debit, 300,000. And, pag may debit, naturalmente, dapat merong credit, double entry. Yun ang ating ibig sabihin sa double entry accounting system. So, credit capital. Why? You're increasing the cash and at the same time, you're also increasing the capital. To increase the capital account, ano sabi natin? It must be credited. So, this is our first entry dito sa ating key accounts. Debit cash, credit capital account. Okay, class. So, that's the bell already. That's it for this meeting. Uh, so, ganun-ganun lang, class. A few minutes of your time every day, imbis na kung ano-ano yung pinapanood mo, just make it a habit to watch our videos pa bilang tulong na rin dun sa sarili mong pag-aaral. Why? Kasi tatandaan mo, hindi lahat ng nababasa mo ng mag-isa ay maririnig mo. At hindi din lahat ng mga naririnig mo ay mababasa mo. Tulungan yan. So with that, see you in our next meeting. See you in the next lesson. But wait, there's more. As promised, here are the names of the chosen few who are randomly selected to receive the book that we are using in our discussions. So, this is just the first batch. Pag hindi na banggit yung pangalan ninyo, basta like lang ng like and then you subscribe to our channel. Maybe next time will be your time. So, this is in no particular order. The first book goes to Mary Ann Abuhan. I hope I pronounce your surnames correctly. Of Ramonal Village, Cagayan de Oro City, Misamis Oriental. Of Liceo de Cagayan University. The second one is... Harnili Arances from Surigao City, University of Mindanao. Well, she's planning to take up her college in University of Mindanao. The third one is Miguel Baldovino of Plaridel, Bulacan of St. Francis de Assisi, Montessori School. Uh, we heard that he qualified for University of the Philippines, Ateneo de Manila University, and De La Salle University. So, good luck sa'yo, uh, Miguel. Hope pagka makakalimot pag nandun ka na. The fourth one is Justin Jego from San Isidro, Virac, Catanduanes, from Catanduanes University Laboratory Schools. The fifth one is Cristaline Samiento Dagandan, from Pontevedra Capis of Jose Diva Avilino Jr. National High School. The next one would be Recaela R. Camara of Caranglaan District, Dagupan City from Dagupan City National High School. And last but not the least, okay, so kung hindi nabanggit yung name mo, kung pwede ka pa naman, next batch. This is just the first batch. Shaira Pascual of Lourdes so Angeles City, Pampanga from Angeles University Foundation. So congratulations sa mga nanalo. Please keep in touch with me. Uh, I need more details para maipadala sa'yo via LBC or to go siguro. Okay, I'll, I'll be giving you the details. Thank you. Thank you.